All right, so you probably thought that was the most clickbaity title and thumbnail you've ever seen, but I will tell you what I don't like about the Canon R1. It is a very, very good camera, and there are some dislikes that I have about it, but before I tell you the dislikes, I'm gonna tell you what I do like about it, because there's a bit. But I'm not gonna go into the specs too much. I might mention a couple specs here and there, but there's so many videos out there already detailing the specs of the camera, so I'm just gonna tell you what I've experienced. Keep in mind, I am a Nikon shooter. I have a Z8, I've got a Z6 II just here, and I love them, I love the lenses, I love pretty much everything about them. But this is going to be sort of an overview from my experience using the camera, and I'm pretty impressed. I wish that my cameras did a lot of stuff that these cameras do. The R1, the first thing you notice when you hold this camera up to your eye is the viewfinder. It's ginormous, it's so big. Like, obviously with a lot of cameras, you have to, be limited by the display that's on it. This is the Z6 II, and if your viewfinder is massive, it's gonna push down your display. But on a bigger professional camera like the Z8 or Z9, or even the, the R1 obviously as well, some bigger Sony cameras, you have that real estate to be able to move the screen down, make the viewfinder bigger. And for a professional camera, where you're using it in a lot of different scenarios, I think having the ability to put your eye up to a very immersive, high quality viewfinder. It's, I think it's 9.4-ish million dots. And uh, what's the measurement of it? I've actually got it here. It's a uh, 0.64 inch OLED color EVF. It's very, very nice. While we're on the topic of the viewfinder, it tracks your eyeball. I'm sure you've seen this or heard this before. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit of a strange, unique feature that I think I would probably turn off most of the time because it might get in the way. However, a very, very good use case example is let's say you have your focus point set and it's like on the far left of the frame and then suddenly something's happening over on the right. You can just look, move your eyeball over to the right and the camera's gonna focus over there. Now, obviously you might wanna look in different directions and you might see a bird and you look at the bird and it focuses on the bird or whatever it might do. Um, I think that's probably where I would turn it off most of the time. But if you're shooting in, I would say high variance applications, maybe at like an event, you wanna quickly look around and focus where you're looking, I think that'd be perfect. The next thing you notice is it's such a big camera. It's this kind of sounds like a dislike, but I quite like the size of it. It's kind of like holding a big, comfy, ergonomic dinner plate. It's got a lot of buttons all over it, and having all the buttons nicely positioned in nicely spaced out ways is actually quite nice. You can really easily reach all of the buttons with both of your hands while you're using it. And while we're talking about the buttons, the on and off button, that's uh, it's actually my one dislike. I told you I was gonna get that. You didn't believe me, but that's one of my dislikes about it is the location of the power button. Obviously, I'm a Nikon shooter. I come from Nikon, so I'm used to everything Nikon, and I love those cameras. But because I'm used to that, I'm a little bit biased, and I prefer having the power button on off switch where the shutter is, because that's just so much easier. Not where the shutter is, but you know, the shutter release button. Um, just because that's much more convenient. You can quickly go from on to off to taking photos in almost, you don't even have to move your finger for Nikon cameras. But having to, with the R1, move your thumb all the way down, almost breaking your grip off the side of the camera to get that button is a little bit inconvenient, I think, but it's not something that's a deal breaker. You're gonna have the camera on most of the time when you're taking photos and you're not gonna turn it off every photo you take and turn it back on for every photo, most likely if you're a professional, which is who this camera is aimed at. So I think having that is not an issue at all. And I think maybe the R3 has that as well, those big dinner plate sized cameras. I almost forgot to mention the eye tracking, not the eyeball tracking where it tracks your eyeball, but the tracking that it has on the subjects in the scene. I'm primarily a people photographer, so it's stickiness to people. I've, that's what I've tested it on. It's awesome. It's very, very good. It's very, very smooth. It is better than the Z8. It's better than the Z6 II by a mile. Sorry, Nikon. And it is impressive. And I wish both of my cameras had sticky autofocus like that. We've got two shutters. We've got the mechanical and the electronic shutter. Pretty cool. Obviously, as I said, I'm not gonna go too much into the specs, but they go pretty fast. About 40 FPS is the maximum for this camera. And that is nice. It's a really nice sort of in-between. It's not the crazy, 120 FPS crop JPEG blah, 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 thing. It's actually photos that are usable at that high burst rate, which is nice. On the Z8, again, sorry Nikon, it does shoot at 120 frames per second, and so does the Z6 III, but it crops in a lot. It makes it 
a lot less megapixels than what you started with, which is still really usable images. I've taken some awesome images at that high burst rate and they're amazing, but having the ability to shoot at faster speeds in RAW is very, very good and obviously a professional feature that you might want. Now, I don't think it records uh, RAW for the 40 FPS. I can't be bothered finding it on here. I'm gonna find it later and just put it on the screen somewhere. So now you know this is the maximum RAW shooting that the R1 can do. But again, I'm not talking about specs too much. Back to what I like and don't like about it. The other dislike that I have about this camera is that it is it's a little bit on the heavy side. You'd kind of expect that with a camera with all of these features and its size, and it is a professional camera. So if you're buying this camera, you're gonna know that it's heavy. It's about 1.1 kilos, I think, with the memory cards and battery in there. And that's not crazy heavy. Like I've got this, <laughs> this is a 85 1.2. Um, this is a chunky lens. This is, I think this is over a kilo on its own. And the R1 is not light, but it's not heavy either. Oh, I also really like that the R1 has a flip out screen. If you have a nice, big, juicy viewfinder like you do on the R1, you're probably gonna use that. It's basically its own LCD screen that you're just putting your face on. I mean, obviously that's what it is. But having the flip out screen, I think is really versatile. You have a very usable, and you're probably gonna use it a lot, viewfinder as well as the flip out screen, which you can use in a different way to a normal LCD screen. Obviously you can flip it around so you can see yourself recording and you can use your viewfinder solely for just taking photos for clients or whatever you might be doing. Oh, the intelligent orientation sensor, almost forgot. That's really nice. Basically when you rotate the camera, your displays rotate with you so that you're not reading sideways displays on a portrait orientation camera. Obviously with a camera like this, where you've got the grips on the top and the side and you can twist it around however you want, it's really, really nice having a orientation that moves and works with you. I think that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it entertaining. If you like this kind of stuff, stick around, subscribe, like. Um, I sound like every YouTuber now. I never thought I'd be saying that, but I'll see you in the next one.